All right. Welcome, everyone. This is the Speed Traveler Roadshow. It is cars and coffee time. If you're listening to us live on KHTS Radio AM 1220 and FM 98.1 in the Newhall area. Also, if you're listening to us live on the Speed Traveler uh, on YouTube, we have all of our shows there. This is show number eight. Today's featured mark is The Lotus. And uh, Chris, something, uh, a brand that uh, is near and dear to our heart. Oh, it's so true. It's so great to be back in uh, in the studio, if you will, even though I'm remote uh, doing the show. But I got to tell you, I mean, Lotus has been a part of our history and automotive history. You know, once it, once it started going fast, Colin Chapman started it. And with Formula One, it was just a racing brand. And now look at the great products that are coming out of Lotus. I mean, with the most recent model, I'm really excited to talk about them. Today. Oh, yeah. Great. It's it, And uh, it's a car that uh, we own. Uh, and for those of you who don't know about the Speed Traveler, we talk about cars. Uh, we talk about road trips that we're taking. We talk about future collector cars. I think the bulk of the questions we normally get is are from people that are saying, hey, what what cars are on their way up in value? Uh, obviously, it's too late for the uh, the twin turbo Supra Toyota, but uh, uh, we love talking about cars that are are still uh, going up in value. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to do a little bit more of a deep dive in Lotus as the show goes on and which cars you might want uh, to uh, purchase. Um, also, we're going to talk a little bit of F1 news later. F1 had a great race at the Grand Prix of Qatar. Or is it Cutter? I don't know. What is it, Chris? Qatar. I say Qatar. <laughs> I say Qatar. But uh, I think our buddy who won the uh, Dakar rally last year, Nasser al now says Cutter for some reason. But we're going to talk about the F1 race uh, in Qatar. Uh, we're going to take about, talk about some great trips you can take uh, with your Lotus or any classic car. Uh, but first, we're going to talk a little bit of Lotus news. And Kelly is joining us here in the studio. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Um, well, I got some information on the new Lotus Electra. It'll be about $100,000 when it comes to the U.S. Um, it's an all-electric SUV with a 373-mile range, and it goes 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. So pretty speedy. Pretty pretty crazy, uh, huh, Chris? <laughs> Yeah, that is crazy. I mean, that's a fast car. It's not a little car. It's a it's a true four seater. Now, is that under three seconds? That's the Type R. Is that correct? That is yes. Yeah, that is the Type so that's R. That's like their top of the line model versus like the the entry level. Is 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 the Type R got a big jump from the entry, or I shouldn't say entry level, but their uh, the their the base level. one. <laughs> Yeah, I think model, yeah. I think it does. Uh, Lotus Vice President Maximilian Swaz, he said that they want to try and give people, families, for instance, the feeling of a two-seat Lotus uh, and a, a two-seat Lotus and an SUV. So kind of a cool, cool plan. What do you think, Kelly? I think it's super cool. It's super fun. I'm happy that SUVs can be just as fun as a little two-seater, a little speedy two-seater. Yeah, and uh, I saw the video of the car. It had some crazy color on it. Oh, what? yeah, it's beautiful. It has a translu translucent pearl colors, and they also have 23-inch rims, so oh, yeah. it's very aesthetically pleasing. It's yeah. a pretty car. It's a beautiful car. I mean, I, I don't know, Chris, what do you think? I mean, this is the fastest Lotus ever made from 0 to 60, other than a Formula 1 car. Uh, yeah, it has, it has too many seats for me. <laughs> and it doesn't make enough noise for you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I, I mean, I love what they're doing. I love what the electric cars, where it's all going. Um, you know, the thing with electric cars is they have to be bigger because the battery packs are so huge. And it looks like Lotus is doing something similar to what BMW did. And it's not just one giant battery. It's a series of batteries. So that probably makes it a little bit easier on the maintenance aspect versus uh, the Tesla has that singular giant battery. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I think it's cool in a sense, you know, I mean, it's good that they're trying to bring the Lotus experience to the world, but uh, you know, for us purists, it's really, uh, it's electric and it has too many seats. But one other thing that Lotus is doing, uh, and that is they are building the Lotus type 66. Uh, they're only going to build 10 of these at, at the moment. I mean, who knows if they're going to build more. Clive uh, Chapman, who is Colin Chapman's son, is heading up this, this department. But they're going to build 10 of these uh, 
track only cars and they are going to be 1.3 million that that's kind of cool keeps lotus uh you know relevant in the racing world well it also goes directly back to where it all started you know clive is the grandson of uh, of colin chapman and when colin chapman started lotus it was pure racing yeah so exactly to see them take that and come back to that is really actually very very exciting much more exciting as cool as the electra is much more exciting to me than that. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree with that. They, they're they getting back to their roots. They're not only focusing on the electric SUVs. Like everybody has like the the new, the Mach-E, you know, like everyone has their new, I, I don't know. I prefer having a more fun, exciting car than just another electric SUV. Yeah, I agree. This is a track only car, Chris. A 1.3 million. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's going to be guys buying this car that uh, have some money to play with. But apparently the performance, even though it looks like a historic car, the performance, the performance is insane, like similar to a Porsche uh, GT3. Yeah, it, it looks like an absolute monster. I'm excited to see, uh, see that whole project come to fruition. And, you know, I want to touch back on something Kelly just said is, you know, she talk, mentioned the Mach E and the Electra, and it's they they look all of these cars look so similar that it it almost doesn't matter what you buy anymore. They all just look kind of the same. And I love the fact that the '66 is going to be this unique track racing track only car. Oh yeah, and uh, taking a quick look at the specs: 830 horsepower V8. If you haven't seen it, we're gonna put a picture up of it at uh, on the on the show uh, or just take a quick Google of it, but, uh, 1.3 million, 830 horsepower. It's a good thing, Chris, that, uh, it's not made of, uh, aluminum from 1966. It's got some carbon, <laughs> yeah. carbon bits in there to help protect the driver. Yeah. Traction control, stability management systems, all of that's really going to come into play. I mean, this is something you and I've talked about a lot about, you know, kids wanting to put more horsepower into the car. It's actually, and we always say, well, you know, just getting a 200 horsepower car, which is a lot for a 1966 car, but for today, that's not that much. But getting a 200 horsepower car, turn off all the controls and try that, try to drive that car in a straight line and then on a track. And it's really difficult without, you know, all the stability management, all the technologies these cars have today. Yeah. And you know what? As we're, we're talking about some of the history, Chris, of uh, Lotus, we have a video on the YouTube page. That's the Speed Traveler YouTube page. You can check out all of our shows uh, dating back to the very first uh, road show. You could check all of our shows there and all of our great videos. And we have a video on the YouTube, uh, the Speed Traveler YouTube page as I think almost 140,000 views now, which is funny because we bought and sold a uh, Lotus Esprit. And uh, we really did it more as a tribute to memorialize owning the car and didn't really plan on a lot of people watching it. But man, that video has taken off. The title of it is uh, Why the Lotus Esprit is the Best Supercar Bargain. Uh, so yeah, check out, uh, check out the video on our YouTube page and you can see all sorts of history about Lotus. Um, as, uh, as you know, Chris, uh, Lotus, I believe, has won seven, six, excuse me, six world championships in Formula One and I think seven overall driving titles. Pretty, pretty storied brand. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, it, they, they, it, Colin Chapman was an innovator when it went with the brand when he started Lotus. He uh, was a very tricky individual. I mean, you remember the Lotus 88 from, it was Lotus 88, wasn't it, from 1979, which was a full ground effects car. Yep. Basically an air ride suspension that Formula One said was just too advanced and they made it illegal. <laughs> you know, and that's just the, that's the kind of thing that Colin Chapman started. And that's, I think, what, Clive is continuing with bringing back the 66. Yeah, they're, they're, believe it or not, they're almost, the brand's almost 75 years old. And uh, as you said, he was an innovator. He loved using light cars because uh, this was in the era of, of the Corvette and some of those big monsters, you know, in the American cars. He uh, loved using light cars with small engines, but getting massive performance because the cars were so nimble. And it was really clever. And actually, I believe it, the Lotus brand, the, the name was started. Uh, it was a nickname for his girlfriend at the time. So he built some street cars. He took them racing. And uh, and then, as you said, it just was it's been a specialty brand ever since. It really has been. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of those lighter weight chassis in our buyer segment when we get to the Lotus uh, uh, Exage and the Elite. 
Yeah, and and the Esprit, of course. But uh, Esprit, of course. you are listening to Cars and Coffee. Uh, excuse me, you are listening to the Speed Traveler Road <laughs> Show, and it is Cars and Coffee time. Chris, it is Cars and Coffee time. It's Cars and Coffee time. <laughs> coffee time. But uh, yeah, if you are listening on uh, KHTS Radio, we are on AM 1220 in Newhall. You can also find us at The Speed Traveler uh, on YouTube. And we will be right back to talk a little bit about fun things you can do with your Lotus and where to find a bargain Lotus right now. Thanks for listening. And the next segment, pal, may not be too long. I'll, I'll set the timer for like seven or eight minutes so we don't run out of time. Right. Because, you know, the next segment's like fun things you can do with your Lotus. And there's not that many things there. So <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, what road do you want to kind of focus on? Oh, uh, you know what? I have it in the segment D. So maybe we'll make oh, segment okay. D a little longer. But I figured uh, one time I had to go up to, to drop something off or pick up something from Morgan when he lived in Lake Arrowhead. So I went up okay. Highway 18. It was really fun. And then when I left, I had it was traffic hour. So I didn't want to go through the 210 or the 10 freeway. So uh, I went to Crestline, which is about five miles, you know, eight miles from Arrowhead. And there were, I yeah. saw a sign for Highway 138. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is perfect. It's going to go around the Pear Blossom Highway and take me around all the back of the traffic. So I went down Highway 138 and oh my God, it was incredible road. It was like oh, empty switchbacks all the way down to the, from the, from the mountains to the desert. Is that that really steep one that kind of goes down uh, from the east side into, into uh It's like, Blossom? Uh, it, it, it's not the mountain. It's on, the, plane, it's on the east side. I picture of it. Yeah, it's on the <laughs> east. I, go, I want to find that. It's on the east side of the 15. Yeah. Um, and it comes down the back side of the mountain. Not not like, because, you know, going down the back side in Big Bear, you end up in Rabbit Flats. But this one, right. you end up uh, at Highway 138, and it goes under the 15, like halfway up the Cone Pass. But, yeah, yeah it's a great, it's probably what you saw. Because, I mean, it, it's literally endless switchbacks and you can see all the way down the hill so you can see if there's traffic coming or not but i figured we'd talk about that just because it was such a fun drive if you're cool with that you could ask me you know what just so you're involved you could ask me about it you know and how about that since you haven't done it do we lose you chris wait 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 what's that oh we're, you're cutting out pal can you hear me now Sort of. Did you move? Is that better? Nope. You're cutting out still. I'm, uh, let me Can we reset this. So better, we're gonna... better. Not, no. not really. So. All right. So this one's in eight minutes. Whoop. Um, you know what? It's all right. We can just talk about it if you uh, if you cut out. But do you want to call back real quick? Now, okay. No, it's cutting in and out. It was perfect before. It's just one of those days. Sure, then he'll. <laughs> what is that? I started singing Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Wait, I'm not hearing anything. All I'm hearing is. Uh... No, you were here because I started because everyone was saying something about it being one of those days, and I just listened to Limp Biscuit yesterday. Let's uh, break stuff. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Hello?
All right. Well, we'll just do the next segment, I guess. Yeah. Um, you guys hear me? Uh, now we hear you. Now we you. can. Okay. Oh, yeah. He sounds good yeah, now. You, found, you sound better now. Does that sound better? Yeah. What yeah. was going on? Did you move? No, I don't know. I turned off my Bluetooth and now you're, I just have you on speakerphone. Okay. Okay. Let's rock while we still. Yep. Yes. All right. Ready, pal? Yep. All right, welcome back to Cars and Coffee Time. This is the Speed Traveler Road Show, and we hope you are enjoying us. We are on KHTS Radio AM 1220 in the Santa Clarita area, and that is hometownstation.com. Also, you can find us at the Speed Traveler YouTube page. You can check out this episode, all the episodes. You can send us messages there if you've got questions about a specific car. Uh, But today, Chris and Kelly, we are talking about the Lotus Mark, that is our featured mark for the day, and what a great car it is. Oh, it's unbelievable, and uh, I'm really excited that it is it is uh, today's marquee brand because it's just such a story brand, and it was my favorite car, you know, Formula One car way back in the day when Colin Chapman got into Formula One. Uh, it was absolutely my favorite car. It just was so sleek and so clean. You mentioned it before, you know, the all aluminum, all the aluminum they use to make it really, really light. That's always been a cornerstone to all the Lotus cars. So it's really cool to be talking about them. Oh, yeah. It's such a great car. And, and as you said, we grew up going to the Long Beach Grand Prix here in Southern California. Chris and I have been to every Long Beach Grand Prix <laughs> since we were little kids. Yeah. 1975 uh, it is coming up on uh, 50 years. But uh, that's really pretty incredible. We were little kids, but uh, the Lotus uh, in 1977 was driven by Mario Andretti. I'm sure you remember that, Chris. I do. And it was such an important race for a number of. Yeah, we love Mario Andretti. Another champion. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's true. Mario Andretti uh, and Kelly, you met him once at uh, yeah, yeah. Auto Club Speedway. Uh, no, I actually met him at Long Beach Grand Prix. Oh, at Long Beach Grand Prix. It was so much fun. And he was driving the two-seater, and he was taking pictures with everybody. And my cousin said, oh, you're the old guy from the Honda commercial. <laughs> I love that. The, probably the only time he was, uh, has been referred to as the old guy from the Honda commercial. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so a uh, pretty storied career with Mario Andretti and uh, Lotus. They He won the 1977 Long Beach Grand Prix. He came back in 78 and came in second. I believe he came in second to Carlos Reutemann, who was in a Ferrari. Uh, and, and then Mario Andretti went on to win the Formula One World Championship in that beautiful John Player special, Lotus 1978. Well, we'll put a picture of it yeah. if you're uh, watching that on, uh, on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, but yeah, what a, what a fun time. I, Chris, did we get you back? Yeah. Do you guys got me? Uh, no, you're kind of, kind of bouncing out, but uh, that's all right. But, uh, you know, we we're going to talk in this segment about some things that uh, you can do, fun things you can do with your Lotus if you buy a Lotus. Uh, and uh, the Lotus Club has a, they've got a really robust, if you're in the Southern California area, they have a very robust chapter uh, and they've got track days, they've got events, uh, and it's a really good, it's a really good place uh, to get some support. If you're a new Lotus owner, I mean, owning Lotuses isn't necessarily uh, uh, for the faint of heart, but we think that it's really rewarding. Um, I mean, the car, for instance, we're going to talk in the next uh, in the next block about the Esprit and where you can find one of those cars. Uh, and we think you're going to make a lot of money owning an Esprit because the they pretty much hit their rock bottom prices and now they're rebounding and now they're on their way back up. And we always sp- say on the speed traveler, you want to try and find cars that are at the bottom of their depreciation cycle. And now they're coming back. So the depreciation cycle to give you an example of, you know, let's say it's a 19, you know, uh, a 1999 uh, BMW M3 when they were new, I think they're about forty six eight thousand dollars they went down to as little as probably ten or twelve thousand dollars maybe seven or eight years ago, hit rock bottom, and now they're on their way back up. So now they're really getting popular. But so that's an example of a depreciation cycle. You want to find cars that are uh, hit, have hit bottom and are on their way back up in value. Uh, the Lotus Esprit certainly has. But yeah, Kelly, some of the 
fun things you can do with the uh, Lotus is uh, they've got all sorts of fun, fun events. Yeah, they have cars and coffees. They have the Lotus Club, which you mentioned. There's James Bond meetups, <laughs> yeah. which are really cool. That's so funny. Yeah, and I think that's what gives the car value is uh, a lot of kids grew up with the picture of the Lotus Esprit from the 80s James Bond movies on the wall or the 70s James Bond movies. And those guys remember it. It's kind of like we were last week, Kelly, when we were talking about uh, Ferrari. People, everyone had a Miami Vice poster on their wall. And so when guys make it big or or women or people, when they make it big, they remember those days and they want to buy the cars that they grew up lusting after. Yeah. So the Esprit definitely was a, a very lusted after car in the late 70s and 80s. But yeah, you mentioned the James Bond events and that is kind of cool. I mean, it's it's a brand that is integral to the James Bond theme and the James Bond movie series. Oh, yeah. And uh, it makes it a lot of fun. Like people dress up at some of these events. Everyone's wearing a dinner jacket with a tuxedo. People are wearing ballroom dresses. Uh, and so, yeah, fun brand, fun thing you can do with your Lotus. All right. We are going to take a quick break and then we are going to come back and we're going to talk about where you can find some bargains on a, a potential Lotus purchase and uh, that is going to be a good time. You're listening to Cars and Coffee Time, and it is the Speed Traveler Roadshow, and it is on KHTS Radio AM 1220 in the New Hall area. Also, you can find us on the our YouTube page, which is the Speed Traveler. We'll be right back. This is the Speed Traveler Roadshow. It is Cars and Coffee Time Saturday morning. If you're listening to us live on KHTS Radio AM 1220, in the Santa Clarita Valley area, or you can hear us and watch and see all of our shows on our YouTube page, which is The Speed Traveler. And Kelly, today we are talking about one of our favorite brands, the Lotus. Yes, we love Lotuses. We had two previously. (laughs) Now we have one. We got rid of the one, but it's the most amazing car. I love that car. And I think it's kind of funny. I wish that more people were um, into Lotuses, in this generation, I've noticed quite a few of my friends, they'll come into our garage and they'll say, wow, you have a DeLorean? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been saying that. And I hope that these new cars that Lotus are um, producing, hopefully these new cars can kind of bring back some of that um, excitement about Lotus. Yeah. And, yeah. and stand on their own. And we, earlier we were talking about the Lotus Electra, yes. which is the new uh, all-electric SUV. Uh, I don't know if that's the the Maybe car that's going to make people think differently, but I hope so. I think so. I think it's becoming more relevant. They're staying with the times, and a lot of other car brands are also doing the all-electric SUVs, and I think they're keeping up with everybody else. Instead of just trying to do their own thing, they're actually keeping up with all the other car brands. So hopefully that'll allow them um, the ability to become more relevant. Yeah, and, and you know what's interesting is part of Lotus's strategy right now is opening showrooms in strategically important areas. They just opened a showroom in Paris, and locally, if you're in the Los Angeles or Southern California area, the Galpin family, which is famous for Galpin Ford, uh, they also own Porsche of Santa Clarita. We need to get them on the show, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Galpin family would be great. But uh, they are going to open a Lotus dealer I believe it's on the corner of Santa Monica Boulevard and Wilshire Boulevard and Beverly Hills. That's awesome. So they want to expose the brand to more people, uh, you know, rich tourists, I guess. But it's a good strategy. I can sense it coming back a lot. I definitely think they're uh, keeping up with the times. And I think they're doing a good job of that, especially in such a touristy area. The tourists love going to see all the crazy displays that all the luxury brands have in Beverly Hills. Like, I mean, I just started college and all of my friends that are from out of town and out of California, they immediately say, oh, wow, like, I can't wait to go to Beverly Hills and see these car brands and see how they have their own showrooms and all these cool things that they don't have. Yeah, it's. I think it's a good strategy. And then in the evenings during the week, uh, they're going to host big events at the car at the Lotus dealer in Beverly Hills. So uh, we'll definitely in a future episode have uh, someone from the Galpin family on. They can talk about their strategy for Lotus. But back to uh, the car of the day, which is the Lotus. And and uh, we actually have a Lotus Esprit, one of my favorite cars. They're never going to build anything that looks like a Lotus Esprit ever again. 
So the fact that you could still find them for 50,000 ish is pretty amazing. I mean, five, six, eight years ago, you could find them for $25,000. Yeah. Didn't you buy the one that we got for around like 17? Yeah. I bought a red one on eBay. Someone had so tried to sell it, tried to sell it, tried to sell it. He was in Michigan. And I think he finally had had enough and just put it on uh, eBay, no reserve. And I picked it up for 17,400 bucks. And by the way, if you're looking for a Lotus or if you're looking for any classic car or really any car, you really need to do your homework. And we always say it here on the Speed Traveler. Uh, we've been through it. We've bought and sold 50 cars at least maybe probably 75 or 80 cars at this point. And uh, we've definitely been beat before and lost a lot of money before. And we've definitely been rewarded by doing our homework and, and doing really well. So you definitely have to do your homework. You've got to go on places like Craigslist and see if you can find for sale by owner cars. Um, there are some opportunities to buy cars from dealers, but what you need to do is if you're going to go that route, which is, of course, easier. You're going to need to uh, target a car or two that's available at a dealer. And and if it goes, don't try it. Don't even call them in the first week or two. If it sits for 30 days, dealers get a little more motivated. If the car sits for 60 days, they get more motivated. If the car sits for 90 days, they get much more motivated. So that is the way to buy a car from a dealer. Um, just wait it out. If it sells in a week, good for them. But it wasn't meant to be. You don't want to pay full retail, you're, it's going to be really hard to get your money back. But yeah, the Lotus Esprit, fantastic car. They're about 50,000 50, right now. And I was going to talk about a few of them. Some of the cars uh, that uh, that I really like is, is the Lotus Esprit S1. That was from 1976 to 1978. Uh, the Lotus Esprit S2, 78 to 80. And the Lotus Esprit uh uh s 2.2 which was 81 82 uh excuse me 80 and 82 but uh, th those are great cars uh once again if you're gonna try and find them you need to go to craigslist you i mean it is okay to find occasionally you'll get a deal on ebay and on bring a trailer but uh it those deals are few and far between you're not going to get a deal go into a classic car broker or, or definitely not dealer lot unless it is on a unless the car's been there for 90 days but keep an eye out for s1 s2 also the turbo esprit that's the 81 to 87 that's the james bond style uh for your eyes only the spy who loved me those are very popular cars they're fast. Uh, we have a 86 Lotus Turbo Spree. It's got 215 horsepower. It's only a 2.2 liter engine, but it's really fun to drive. Oh, it's a blast. It's a great car. Even being a passenger in it. We love that car. It's super unique too. Like people, whenever we're driving by in it, I've seen so many people's heads just turn so fast when yeah. they see the car. Yeah, it is a, it's a great car to own it. I mean, uh, we have a little note here on, on things we want to talk about. One of the things is don't buy a do-it-yourself oh <laughs> fixer Lotus. No, no, don't do it. It's not a good idea <laughs> unless you're really prepared to have to deal with a lot of issues, a lot of fixing. It's yeah. definitely not one of those fun little fixer-upper cars. It's it's very complicated. It, it is, and there are some outstanding places where you could find uh, parts for years, we've dealt with a company called JAE. Uh, the website is jaeparts.com. They are not paying us. <laughs> they are just an amazing resource. Joe and Jay over there, they're in Goleta, California. I don't know how they hunt these parts down. I, I'm sure they get some from cars that have been wrecked here. I'm sure they get some from, from Europe. But uh, they are an incredible resource. They know Lotus is inside and out particularly the older ones. They really don't have as much interest in the newer ones. They love vintage Lotuses. So uh, if you end up picking up a Lotus Esprit, I think your second call should be to uh, Jay or Joe over at JEE -E Parts, but really good guys there. We're trying to get our Lotus back on, back on the road again. It's been sitting for about a year and a half, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll give you an update as we get it going. Oh yeah. But back to collecting. Uh, I looked on Car Gurus today. There is a newer model. So Lotus, uh, as we mentioned, they had the S1, S2, S3. That takes us through 1987. Then they went to the Esprit X180. 
That was for about five or six years. And they went finally to the S4 and then moved on to the Lotus V8. So the Lotus V8 was a eight cylinder turbo. Great, great car. But once again, a little complicated and not for the faint of heart, but uh, great car. I saw it this morning. I saw a V8 turbo on uh, car gurus this morning for $65,000. So that's about the, uh, the barrier for entry right now. That price is on its way back up. They were as low as 50. So just starting to bounce up. Uh, if you want something different, you know, if you're out in the classic car market, you don't want a Ferrari, you don't want a Porsche, you want something that just looks different and gets lots of attention. We strongly suggest getting a Lotus. I like the V8 Turbo. It is a little more complicated. The earlier models, the S1, S2, S3, that takes you from 76 to 1987. Those cars are definitely a little easier to work on. So something to think about if you're looking to uh, purchase a Lotus. Also, you brought up a good point, Kelly. A lot of people confuse the mid-80s Lotus S3 and Turbo Esprit with a DeLorean. Yeah. And that's because of the Back to the Future. Uh-huh. They all think that they all say, oh, is that the car from the from Back to the Future? <laughs> and uh, it has kind of that louvered uh, sh window shadow in the back. So it does look a lot like it. Also, uh, for those of you who don't know, when John DeLorean was building his car, he asked Colin Chapman, he paid Colin Chapman to come in and help him develop the car. Oh, so, I didn't know that. So that makes so much sense now because yeah. they're so similar, yes. honestly. So Colin, they, they definitely took some uh, styling cues from the Lotus Esprit. It looks a lot like an Esprit. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for an Esprit, you could expect to pay about 50000 for the earlier ones. I've seen them as much as 65, but wow. every once in a while, I know they've, that they've gone crazy. That is crazy stuff. It's crazy to think about because I just remember you buying that car for $17,000. Yeah, it is and unbelievable. Just, just hearing how much it's increased in value. It, it, yeah, if you want an Esprit, I wouldn't be deterred. I would just hit um, on Craigslist, go into cars for sale. You can go by owner and you could... Uh, go to the left side where it says Los Angeles, for instance, for us. Scroll down to the bottom. It says use map and then just expand the map to the whole country yeah. and put in Lotus Esprit and you'll see what's out there. There's but it's cool, though. It's really cool because if it's already gone up that much, it's going to just keep going and going, I think. Yeah, as we said, they're never going to make anything that looks like a, a Lotus Esprit again. So we're really high on that car. It's not just because we own it. It's just a great car. Also, the... Uh, the, if you're also looking for something a little newer, 2007 Lotus made it the Exige S. Uh, and that is an amazing little car. Lightweight, uh, small engine. It only makes 220 horsepower, but it's incredible how quick that car is. We saw one today on uh, uh, Auto Trader, and that was uh, $69,000. It's not too bad, but not it had a lot of bad. miles, 85,000 miles. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a Lotus too, so it, you got to consider that. It is, yeah, and and so that you know th those types of cars. I mean, the Exige and the Exige S. There's there's not many of them out there. Um, they're a little newer, so they have some of the newer creature comforts. Uh, they're probably a little bit better engineered. <laughs> they're not, you know, the earlier Esprits were kind of built in an old Formula One factory, and uh, you know their reliability is not incredible. Um, so you know if you're if you're looking to get into a Lotus and you want to try something unique, that Exige isn't bad. Also, the Lotus Evora in 2011, they launched a car called the Evora. It's a great car. The Evora S is the one that I've targeted. It uses a Toyota 3.5 engine. So they got pretty clever there. They use a really reliable engine, but the styling of the car is beautiful. So take a look out there for the Lotus Evora at 2011 to about 14. Those cars are in the $60,000 range, but probably will go up in value. So keep an eye on that. But all right, we are going to come back for our final segment in a few minutes here. And we are going to talk about the F1 race at the Grand Prix of Qatar over the weekend. We're also going to talk about some fun roads we took uh, recently. Uh, this is the Speed Traveler Roadshow on KHTS Radio. Okay, welcome back to the Speed Traveler Roadshow on KHTS Radio in the Newhall area. 1220 on your AM dial and 98.1 FM. Also available on all your favorite podcast platforms. You can find the Speed Traveler Roadshow. Just uh, pull up one of your platforms and search for the name and you can find us there. And you can see all of the episodes 
If you missed one, we had some great episodes on Ferrari, on Mercedes, on Ford. You can go back and uh, check out all of the episodes on the Speed Traveler YouTube page. But Kelly, we're coming back in uh, our final block here. We're going to talk a little bit about fun things you can do with your Lotus. Uh, and Lotus. also a little bit of Formula One, yep. my favorite. <laughs> You're going to talk a little bit about Formula One and the Grand Prix of Qatar. Um, but uh, first, some great things you can do with your Lotus. Uh, I recently took a trip and uh, it, I found an undiscovered for at least for me road it was pretty pretty cool where did you find this road it was was it by when you did your arrowhead trip yes exactly so if you're not from southern california and, and you happen to be out here on a disneyland trip or whatever family trip <laughs> make sure to break away get a fun car uh some of the some of the places you can find fun cars are uh turo uh, on the Turo is a site where people rent you their own cars. And there's also that new place. It's what it's called Sixt. Yeah, Sixt. It's cool. It and has all the like luxury cars. Exactly. Cool and part of their advertising is you get to drive a fun car. Yeah. Uh, actually, probably someone we should hit up for sponsorship. As well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Sixt uh, has some really fun cars to drive. So if you find yourself in Southern California and you want to take a fun little day trip, you can do what I did. And uh, drive from Southern California. It's about two hours from downtown Los Angeles to Lake Arrowhead. It's a mountain town. I think it's a mile high, 50, 5,300 feet of elevation. Uh, they get snow in the winter, so you got to be a little careful of that. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're taking one of those sports cars that you're renting. <laughs> <laughs> but in late spring, summer, and early fall, uh, it's really beautiful up there. There's pine trees. Uh, as you, you would take, uh, from downtown Los Angeles, you would take highway 10, you go East, uh, and then you find your way over on the 210, and then you get off on highway 18 highway 18 takes you from basically the floor, uh, the Valley all the way up to, uh, Lake Arrowhead. And it's a stunning drive. We did it recently oh, yeah. on our way to big bear. It was so beautiful. I really just, I still think about it because it was just such a pretty, wonderful experience you know just seeing all the trees we don't see a lot of trees in santa clarita <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly I mean, we got a few but not like the way oh my goodness that was beautiful so it's more like uh southern california where, where we're located at newhall where khts radio station is is a, a little more deserty i mean it's kind of a combination but it's it's beautiful but it's just it's so unique and it's pretty crazy to think about how California can have such different terrain. It's and it's cool to drive in all this different Agreed. terrain. And I think that's really what makes Southern California. I mean, in my mind, the car capital of the world. Yeah. Uh, all the design studios, BMW, Mercedes, uh, Ferrari, I believe, they're all here in Southern California. Um, so you know, we're we're a little biased. But back to the trip to Lake Arrowhead. So up Highway 18 up to Lake Arrowhead. Uh, it's a idyllic mountain town with pine trees and a beautiful lake. A uh, great place to have lunch. And then on the way back down the hill, I was headed down Highway 18, about five miles from Lake Arrowhead's a little town called Crestline. And uh, I saw that there was a sign that said Highway 138. It happened to be three in the afternoon. So I was worried about L.A. traffic. And Highway 138 kind of goes around through the desert, through the Palmdale area. And uh, it goes around the backside, it avoids traffic. So I'm like, okay, I got a little time to kill. <laughs> I'll just try Highway 38. And I was rewarded with the most epic highway ever. It was uh, uh, down, uh, it went from about 5,000 feet of elevation down to probably 2,000 feet. Uh, but it was just switchbacks, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way down the hill. You Which could, is pretty cool, though. That's it, so it, that's so awesome. That sounds fun. It was an epic drive. You could see over the edge, so you could see if there was any traffic coming. Uh, and so you could look all the way down the hill. And it was one of the best roads I think I've ever been on in my life. What were you? What car were you in? That day I was driving a BMW uh, 340. Oh, which, fun. Yeah, it's a great car. It was in Sport Plus mode, of course. Oh, awesome. Wait, <laughs> so, was that with, with no traction control going down a hill with a giant <laughs> cliff on the side of it? I think the I think the traction control was not on on the way down. But it was, it was a blast. So uh, 
made it down the hill, and uh, you end up in um, the Cajon Pass on the 15th. Oh, interesting. Which was interesting. That's so, you go down so you're the back more towards the, Vegas? Yeah, it's on the way to Vegas. For those of you who don't know Southern California, it's Highway 15. It's the big through affair between Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City. Uh, so you end up on the 15 in the Cajon Pass, and then I was still able to take the back way, which is what we, how we uh, refer to it, around the backside of uh, the mountains, Mount Baldy, Get home without traffic. So wow, that's epic, so cool. Epic drive. Let us know if you're in the Southern California area, you want to find some fun drives, just hit us up on our YouTube page, which is the Speed Traveler. Send us a note. We'd be happy to respond to you and yeah. send you a Speed Traveler t-shirt. It's super interesting too, because um, honestly, it would probably have taken the same amount of time. You could either go through, sit in traffic and right. take the shorter way. Or you could end up going the longer way, but having so much fun driving all around. Yeah. And that's what the Speed Traveler Roadshow is all about, sharing our fun adventures. But uh, you know what? We're coming up to our last little segment, Kelly. It's about the Grand Prix of Qatar. My favorite. I just love myself some Formula One. Yep. And we've got some Formula One races coming up. We've got... Uh, oh, I'm so excited. I think the next one coming up is here. It's in It's in the U.S., right? At Austin, yep. Austin, at so Coda, exciting. At Circuit of the Americas. I just looked up tickets. I've been getting Instagram ads every time I've been on Instagram. I delete it and then redownload it and immediately i always see formula one tickets 475 dollars <laughs> for uh the grand- walk of, uh, so it's not, not a grandstand is that just the general like general admission i thing? think it's um general admission where it will let you go to like the concerts they're having queen perform it's pretty i mean it's super cool it's oh such that's a, right and queen and the guy with adam lambert. adam lambert yeah it's really cool it's i mean I would go in two seconds, but I mean, it, it's crazy expensive, Vegas, but it's so cool. And after that, uh, they go down to Mexico City and then back to uh, Las Vegas, November 16, 17, 18, and talk about an expensive ticket. Oh my goodness. Those tickets are crazy stuff. They are, but it's such a cool experience. Like that one specifically, the Las Vegas Grand Prix. It's the first they've ever done, right? It's the inaugural rent. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's the first one. I, I'm sure they're going to have these crazy performers. Everyone who is someone will be there for sure. Yeah. Actually, now that you say it, uh, I, I believe, uh, I actually, I know that F1 was in Las Vegas in the 80s. Oh, wow. Uh, that's I re- crazy. I remember watching the Formula One race from the top floor of the Sands Hotel, which was across the street from Caesars Palace. Oh, I that's believe it so was- cool. 1983 f1 was in the parking lot of caesar's palace and uh if memory serves me correctly i think the race may have been won by elio de angelis or uh i'm not quite sure but uh good good time there but yeah the f1 tickets are three thousand dollars for for a grandstand seat right now so it's the inaugural race everybody wants to go to everyone wants to go and i understand why it's so cool and finally there's a lot of um U.S. like citizens that are now the biggest fans of Formula yeah. One, all because of Drive to Survive yep. and all because we're all watching it on Netflix. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> the Netflix show is has increased the viewership five times in the in the U.S. It's unbelievable what it's done. But uh, back to the Grand Prix of Qatar, uh, it was uh, another Max Verstappen domination in the race on Sunday. But a pleasant surprise was McLaren with a second and third finish. And they weren't far off of Max. They were only about seven or eight seconds. So he, Max didn't absolutely annihilate the field like usual. And uh, our buddy Zach Brown. We who, love Zach Brown. Who He's runs, awesome. Who runs McLaren is a, a friend of ours. We'll, we'll try and have him on the show. Uh, great guy. We'll actually we'll try and have him on the show before uh, before Vegas. That'll yeah, be a great it's time. so cool. It's such an exciting time. So listen in for, uh, for future episodes. We'll try and have Zach Brown on from McLaren. But a uh, uh, quick note that uh, Oscar Piastri, the rookie driver, won the Saturday sprint race in a McLaren beating Max Verstappen. So amazing. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Mercedes did a, a a good job in the sense that uh, Russell came back. He he was taken out by his teammate in <laughs> lap one, turn one, uh, and Hamilton tried to go around the outside of oh him. Oh my goodness! They came together. Ham- Hamilton broke his car. Russell uh, George Russell spun off, got back going, and actually made his way back to fourth. So not a bad not a bad weekend all in all for, for 
Russell, but my goodness, <laughs> not a great job for poor Lewis Hamilton. No, not a good job. But yeah, we're excited. The U.S. the two U.S. rounds of uh, Formula One are coming up. Oh yeah, we're gonna do a live remote from one of them, so it should be a blast. We're looking to do the Las Vegas one. But that pretty much wraps up our show today. Once again, our featured brand or our featured mark was Lotus, and uh, we have a Lotus sitting in our garage. Oh, the cookies are done, Kelly. <laughs> We have a Lotus in our garage. It's a great car. It's only going to go up in value the Esprit. I'd keep an eye out for him. And uh, please join us next week on the Speed Traveler Road Show. Comes to you on Saturday mornings on KHTS Radio, hometownstation.com. Also, you can find all of our episodes on the Speed Traveler YouTube page. And you can also check out the Speed Traveler. Search for it on your favorite podcast platform. I believe we're on all of them now. Have a great week driving and we'll see you next Saturday.